Genesis Active Filter Synthesis makes designing active filters fast and easy. Active filters are used for frequencies up to 50 MHz where a passive filter would be unpractical due to the very large inductor value needed. They are compact, can provide gain in the filter section, are often cheaper than passive filters, are easily tuned, and they prevent load impedance from affecting the filter. To start, select Active Filter from the Synthesis menu in Genesis. Start your synthesis with the factory default values. On your screen, you'll see the filter properties, the filter response, and the filter schematic. You can synthesize low pass, high pass, band pass, or band stop filters. There are six filter shapes available. Butterworth for flat passband with slow roll-off, Chebyshev for faster roll-off with passband ripple, Bessel for flat group delay, Singly terminated for filters of zero or infinite impedance at one end. These are often used for audio crossover networks. Singly equalized, which has better selectivity than Bessel, while preserving approximately flat group delay. Or you can load a custom filter shape using user file. For more information on filter types and subtypes, look at the help section. Look under synthesis, under A filter, and under A filter types. Each filter subtype is rated for tunability, simplicity, and insensitivity from 1 through 10. Tunability is how easy it is to tune aspects such as Q, gain, and frequency response of the filter. Simplicity is the ease of realizing the schematic. Insensitivity is how immune the filter is to component tolerances for realization. When a subtype has an asterisk, that means it provides power gain instead of voltage gain. Each subtype has a detailed help section, but I'll give you some tips. Minimum inductor has no gain, but has an inherent 6 decibel loss. Minimum capacitor has less parts than minimum inductor, but more resistors in the signal path. Single feedback has the least parts, but it's very sensitive to component tolerances. Multiple feedback is similar to single feedback, and it can have less components than single feedback when there's no gain. Low sensitivity requires two op amps, but it's very insensitive to component tolerances. VCVS, which stands for Voltage Controlled Voltage Source, uses equal capacitors. State Variable is a biquadratic design which has a lot of parts, but allows every aspect of the filter to be tuned directly. There are also elliptic filters. Elliptic filters have even sharper roll-off than Chebyshev, but ripple in the passband and the stop band. You can select from normal or equal Cower Chebyshev elliptic shapes. We'll start out with a high-pass filter. Notice how the minimum inductor high-pass is power gain. You can easily switch subtypes and see the difference. For example, I'll choose single feedback, Chebyshev. Let's make a bandpass filter. Bandpass also has coupled subtypes for narrow bandwidth, and max gain subtypes, which provide gain without adding more components. I'll pick the elliptic VCVS subtype. Now let's look at the settings menu. I'll reduce this filter to a fourth order. I'll increase the passband ripple to 0.5 dB. And I'll lower the high frequency cutoff. The resonator settings shows values for parts that will be used by default in the filter design. Now let's look at the options menu. You can add input or output buffers. You can add a voltage follower, which is just a buffer, or you can add an impedance matching buffer to match impedance. If you add any kind of input buffer, the filter changes to power gain. I'll add an impedance matching output buffer. When you add an impedance matching buffer, you change the impedance that you want to match in the settings menu. You can see the output buffer on the schematic. There are more options, like Allow Third Order Section, which gives every op amp a third pole section. This can increase simplicity of design, but adds sensitivity. There's Distribute Gain, which moves gain sections over the whole filter instead of at one amplifier. 
Simple first order sections will turn unnecessary op amps into simple RC filters. Reverse order of poles will put amplifying sections first in the filter design. There are also op amp default settings. These are op amp values that you would get from a data sheet. There's input resistance, output resistance, DC gain or large signal voltage gain, and 0 dB frequency, also known as unity gain or gain bandwidth product. Now let's look at the G values tab. This tab shows calculated coefficients for filters up to 21st order, automatically generated by Genesis. You can also load in your own if you have a custom filter design or if you get one from a book. Genesis comes with a few examples to get you started. Now let's look at the summary tab. This tab contains exact output resistance, the sum of all the G values, which can be used to calculate things like insertion loss, and the total gain of your filter. We can see or change optimization settings in the optimization menu. Let's start out by looking at the goals tab. This is a bandpass filter, so it has three optimization regions. There's the pass band in the middle of the graph, the lower stop band on the left of the graph, and the upper stop band on the right of the graph. Current air shows how far away the measurements are from the optimization target. In the variables tab, you can see variables that Genesis will change to optimize the design. In the method tab, you can see the optimization method that Genesis will use. Now we'll press optimize and start optimizing. Genesis automatically adjusts values to optimize your design and you can see it by tracking the status bar and the air values. The closer to zero the air value is, the better. The bar isn't making any progress, so we'll end the optimization and remove the graph checkpoints so we can see what our new filter design looks like. This filter type doesn't work that well with our specifications, so let's try a different one. I'll try the low sensitivity filter because I think it has the correct aspects for this filter design. And I'll change the shape to Chebyshev to allow ripple in the passband. Now we'll click optimize again. Okay, I'll stop it here. This filter looks more like what I was trying to design. I'll close the filter properties and tile the windows horizontally to make it easier to see. Now press Ctrl A on the schematic to select all of the components, and make all of the components tunable. Notice how the tuned components turn green on the schematic and show up in the tune window. Enable Auto Recalc to automatically reanalyze the filter whenever anything is tuned. Make sure that the tuning is set to standard values. Now tune components up or down and they'll automatically go to the next standard value. Notice how when you tune a component, the response changes, and try to tune the components to keep the response in the correct shape. After some tuning, the frequency response is in the correct shape and the component values are standard, which means that this filter design is realizable. Filter designed. Now, you can also design active filters quickly.